Hey there, folks. Happy Friday. I'd like to expand our coverage of completely elastic collisions from one dimension to two using this problem involving colliding hockey pucks. There's a very important property of two-dimensional elastic collisions that we haven't seen yet. The situation plays out like this. Puck A moves horizontally towards puck B at 15 meters per second in the positive x direction. They collide elastically and then fly off at different angles, with puck A deflected at 25 degrees relative to the x-axis and puck B at some unknown angle. The final velocities of both pucks are unknown as well. The special property that we need to know about in order to solve the problem is this. Whenever two objects of equal mass collide elastically and one of them is initially at rest, their final velocities are always perpendicular to one another. Let me prove to you why that is. Here's our conservation of momentum equation applied to both pucks. Since they're of equal mass, we're free to drop the subscripts of A and B on the masses and just call them M. With that change, we can divide the mass out completely next. Remember that elastic collisions conserve momentum and energy. And the two-dimensional way of writing that statement is to use vector form for the velocities. Let's also grab the energy conservation equation using the same vector format. And just like with momentum, since the masses are equal, the subscripts can be dropped, and now the m's and the one-halves can be divided out. Now I know it doesn't look like we have much here, but check this out. I'm going to label the momentum equation number one and the energy equation number two. Let's take equation number one and square it. When we do that, we'll get the following. Next, I'll subtract equation number two from this result. We can see that the left-hand side cancels out completely, and on the right, the similar velocity squared terms for A and B will cancel out as well. And what's left is this. We should probably divide both sides by two as well. And when we do that, we arrive at the heart of the reason why those final velocities are perpendicular to one another. For two non-zero vectors, their dot product can only equal zero if they are separated by 90 degrees. Therefore, angle A and angle B have to add up to 90. We were already given angle A, so if we take this expression and subtract that angle on both sides and plug in its value, well, now we know what angle B is. It's 65 degrees. And there's our answer for the direction of B's velocity. Let's go back to the picture real quick, though. We need to be careful about the way that we use that angle because it points down and to the right. This means it won't have a positive x and y component like a regular positive 65 degree angle would. Instead, because of the positioning here, the x component will be positive, but the y component will be negative. So keep that in mind once we start getting trig identities involved in the next part. With that said, let's move on to our momentum conservation and investigate specifically in the x direction. Initially, all the momentum is in the x direction because of puck A moving horizontally. Then after the collision, we have to use cosine components for each final velocity included in our terms on the right. When the masses are divided out, 
we get the following relation. And since we know what the initial velocity is, we can plug that in on the left as well. Here we have one equation with two unknowns. So we'll have to take a look at momentum in the y direction to go any further. Let's label this bottom equation number three so we don't forget about it. In the y direction, we get zero on the left, and there's now sine components attached to our terms on the right instead. And notice, we have a negative sign here. And that's because of the way that I described 65 degrees as being pointed in our picture. If we divide out the masses, we can toss this negative second term over to the left-hand side and then solve for one of our final velocities. I'm going to choose the final velocity of b. And once that's done, we can call our new equation number four. Let's take equation number four and plug that back into equation number three, like this. Now we have the final velocity of puck a in both terms, so that can be factored out on the right. Next, let's divide both sides by all of this trig business inside the parentheses. There's not really any numbers to plug in here since it's all angles and a speed that we're aware of already. So go ahead and just stick the whole thing in your calculator. You should get 13.6 meters per second. And there's our answer for the final speed of puck A. We're going to take this and plug it back in to equation number four to get the final speed of puck B which comes out to be 6.34 meters per second. Now we know the direction of puck B's velocity along with the final velocities of both. I hope this helped. Thanks for watching everyone. Have a great weekend.